We have seen in the previous video, modeling mass, spring and damper element, that the spring element is any element in a vibrating system which has flexibility property. Now let's assume one end of the spring is attached on a rigid wall. If we apply a force on the spring to stretch it by, let's say, x, so that force is equals to F K multiplied by X. So K, we call it here the stiffness constant of the spring. So K will be F divided by X and therefore uh, the stiffness constant has a unit of Newton over meter. Okay? While the mass element stores kinetic energy, the spring element stores potential energy. Potential energy. The potential energy equals to a half k multiplied by x square. Okay? It is very straightforward. Remember, the potential energy of the spring is a half multiplied by the stiffness constant multiplied by the square of the extensions of the spring. Now the concept for the rotational spring is similar. So let's say we have a rotational spring. We fix one end and we need a torque to, to twist the spring by theta. Or let's say we have a rod fixed on a rigid wall. Okay, so we twist the rod using torque T and we end up with the the rod being twisted by theta. So the torque equals to Kr multiplied by theta. So Kr is also the stiffness constant but we call it a rotational stiffness or torsional stiffness constant. So Kr will be T divided by theta and therefore it has the units of Newton multiplied by meter. And similarly, the potential energy of the rotational spring is a half Kr multiplied by theta square. So for a rotational spring, remember the concept that Kr is the torsional stiffness constant and theta is the rotational displacement. Okay, so let's go back to the linear spring Say we have a case where we put two springs, each end is connected together. One of the spring has stiffness constant K1 and the other has stiffness constant K2. So one end is connected to a rigid wall and at the other end, we apply a linear force F. Now if we look at the spring from here, which is from the force, okay, so we expect the spring to stretch by, let's say, X. So for the whole system of the spring, we expect to have the stiffness constant which is K equals to F divided by X. Sound reasonable, eh? But K here is the combinations of K1 and K2. Okay, so we can call this the K equivalent or stiffness equivalent. Now if you look at from K1, the spring K1 has been stretched by let's say y where y is equals to f divided by k1 for spring k2 the spring is extend by x at this end but we have another y displacement pushing from the back so the total displacement for spring k2 is not x but x minus y which is equals to f divided by k2 so we can bring y to the right side of the equation so we have x equal to f divided by k2 plus y and then we can substitute y which is uh, f divided by k1 
and then we can bring F outside the bracket and from here we have F over X equals to 1 over 1 over K1 plus 1 over K2 which is equals to K equivalent okay so this one is the K equivalent that we expect to have in the beginning now this arrangements of springs we call series okay so to summarize let's say we have multiple springs arranged in series so from uh, spring K1 K2 until Kn so where n is can be any integer can be 20 30 40 or 100 so the k equivalent is 1 over 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2 plus dot 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 plus 1 over kn remember two concepts in series the first one is that each of the spring has different displacement but every spring in the system will share the same force with the main acting force okay now let's look at the opposite arrangements of series which is parallel so we can arrange multiple springs in parallel from spring k1 k2 until kn so where n can be any number then we fix the spring at one end then we apply force at the other end so the whole springs will have the same extensions which is x so to balance the active force each spring will have a different reacting force which is f1 f2 until fn so the acting force in the parallel spring is the total of the reacting force which is F1 plus F2 plus dot dot plus Fn because force is uh, stiffness constant multiplied by displacement so F1 is K1 multiplied by X plus K2 multiplied by X plus dot 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 plus Kn multiplied by X and then we can group all the stiffness constants and leave X outside the bracket so from here we have F divided by X equals to K1 plus K2 plus K3 plus dot 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 plus Kn which is the K equivalent for the parallel springs okay so remember the main important concepts in a parallel spring which is all the springs have the same displacement but each of the spring will carry different reacting force now let's look at the stiffness for different kind of structures the first one let's say we have a cantilever beam we apply force F at the tip so the stiffness at the tip of the cantilever is divided by 3 multiplied by E multiplied by I divided by L to the power of 3 where E is the Young's modulus of the beam I is the second mass moment of inertia and L is the length of the beam the second example let's say we have a twisted rod having length L so the stiffness is defined by G multiplied by J divided by L where G is the flexural rigidity of the rod J is the second mass moment of inertia and L is the length of the rod the third example is a beam which is simply supported at both ends or pin pin in other words and a force F is applied exactly at the mid span of the beam 
the stiffness for this kind of structure is given by 48 multiplied by E multiplied by I divided by L to the power of 3. So for other simple structures, the stiffness can be referred in the stiffness table, which is usually available in any mechanical vibration textbooks, or you can Google it and then find it in the internet. Okay, so let's go to the next examples where we have a cantilever beam with stiffness constant at the tip KB. And this is connected to two springs having stiffness constant K1 and K2. So we give a linear force to press the tip of the beam down so that it has displacement X. So the question is, what is the equivalent stiffness constants for this whole system? If we look at from the force, we can see that K1 and K2 is in series arrangement. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to, to first find the equivalent stiffness for K1 and K2. And then we can replace this with one spring. Let's say having constant stiffness Ks. So Ks equals to 1 over 1 over K1 plus 1 over K2. Okay, so let's draw again the system. So we have the cantilever beam with stiffness constant KB at the tip. And then the two springs have been replaced by one spring having stiffness constant Ks. Okay. And the next question is, what kind of arrangements between the cantilever beam and the spring? Is it series or parallel? It looks like they are in series, doesn't it? Note that the team of the beam is displaced by X and the spring Ks is also suppressed by X. So both have the same displacement. Remember the concept? If the spring elements have the same displacement, then they are in parallel. So the stiffness constant equivalent is simply KB plus KS. And KS is what we have obtained before. Okay? Right, so what I want to discuss next is that we will use the potential energy to find the equivalent stiffness constants of a system, especially one which has combinations of linear spring and rotational spring elements. Let's consider we have a shaft connected to a disc, and this shaft is fixed on a ridged wall. And on the other side of the disc, we have another shaft, also rigidly attached on a wall. And let's assume that the disc has radius R. Okay. So imagine if we twist the disc with a rotational displacement theta. Then we will have both shafts connected to this disc to also twist by theta. Let's assume that the shaft to have torsional stiffness constants KT1 and KT2. Now, what about the stiffness constants for the disc? Should we treat the disc here as flexible element or mass element? Yes, that's correct. The disc in this case does not deform. When we twist the disc, the whole body rotates. So we should treat it as a mass or inertial element, not a spring. Okay? Now, if we connect the disc with linear spring having stiffness constant K, we fix the disc on the wall. We can imagine that when we twist the disc by theta, the spring will be suppressed by linear displacement, say x, providing that theta is sufficiently small. Remember the concept of linearizations. You can go back to my video again if you want. That x can be written as x equals to r multiplied by theta. Okay, so let's find the equivalent stiffness constant for this system using the potential energy. So what we need to do is that we just need to write down the potential energy of each element. 
and then summing up them all together at the end to find the equivalent stiffness constant. So it should be very straightforward. Okay. So let's see the first shaft here. The displacement is theta and it has rotational stiffness constant kt1. So the potential energy is u1 equals to a half kt1 multiplied by theta square. Similarly for the second shaft, it has rotational displacement theta and it has rotational stiffness constant kt2. So the potential energy is straightforward u2 equals to a half kt2 multiplied by theta square. And for the linear spring, the stiffness constant is k and linear displacement is x. So the potential energy is u3 equals to a half k multiplied by x square. So the total potential energy is the summations of these three potential energy. So u total equals to u1 plus u2 plus u3. So we will end up with a half kt1 plus kt2. So I group this one together. Multiplied by theta square plus a half k x square. Now we know that x is equals to r theta, so we can substitute x into the equations. So we're going to have a half kt1 plus kt2 plus kr square multiplied by theta square. Let's look at again the general formula for the potential energy, which is a half multiplied by k equivalent multiplied by theta square. So we notice that these equations has the same form with the general formula. So the value in this bracket is actually the k equivalent of the system. Now because we use theta as the generalized coordinate when we derive the total potential energy, so the equivalent stiffness we have here is torsional stiffness equivalent. So instead of torsional stiffness equivalent, we can also have linear stiffness equivalent if we want to. So we should substitute theta here with x. Okay, so we know that theta equals to x over r. So if you substitute theta here in this potential energy, so the potential energy will be in terms of x instead of in terms of theta. Okay, I'm sure you can find it yourself. What is the linear stiffness constant equivalent for this system? And this is the end of this video. We have discussed about series and parallel connections of spring elements and how we can use the potential energy to find the stiffness constant equivalent for a spring system. Okay guys, hope you can grasp the concept and see you in the next video which is about the damping element. Bye-bye.